Hi everyone, this is Dr. Peter Kahn. Welcome to my talk today. And uh, this is the last day of Nourish Festival. Can you believe it? It's almost going by too fast. So today's topic is going to be on identifying and solving chronic digestive symptoms. And uh, now uh, my background is a uh, board certified integrative medicine, board certified in functional medicine, and also board certified in functional neurology is that I'm able to put this big idea, this big picture together between the brain, immune, and in the gut. So my goal is to give you a lot of value today and share with you some of these clinical nuggets of why people have these chronic digestion problems, but yet they're not getting any answers in conventional treatment and even in alternative natural treatment. They're not getting the proper assessment. They're not getting to the root cause. So uh, again, I'm talking, but I just want to make sure that you guys are actually seeing me. So if you don't mind, uh, you guys can put in the chat that you guys are able to hear me and see me. That will be great. Let me just make sure my team is on here, that I'm not talking to myself. And uh, the past couple of days, I was able to see people put in the chat that they are here and present. Okay, great. So there's a little uh, little delay as, uh, as it has been the past couple of days. So great. Awesome. Thank you guys for jumping in. And we have about 1,000 people registered for this talk. So I know the talks that I deliver resonates with many of you. And that's why you know we're consistently the top ranking talk uh, on this festival. And um, so we're going to be talking about digestion, OK? And so with digestion, you have a lot of different types of symptoms. These digestive symptoms, and maybe some of you can relate to it, include things like gas and bloating, include things like heartburn and reflux. You may have constipation or loose stool or diarrhea or alternating constipation and diarrhea. You may have things like IBS being thrown to you, right? IBS is irritable bowel syndrome, but when you get a diagnosis IBS, it just means that the doctor says, I'm BSing you because I don't know what's wrong with you. And you go to the doctor, you complain, my bowel's irritated and they don't know what's wrong with you. So they say, irritable bowel syndrome. Well, duh, you already told them that your bowel's irritated, having constipation, diarrhea, and gas and bloating. So having the diagnosis of IBS doesn't tell you what's causing the IBS. You see, that's the problem much of the medical diagnosis is just telling you exactly what you told the doctor, your symptoms, but spitting it back to you in Latin, you know, gastroparesis, you know, uh, lymphocytic colitis, like none of these diagnoses tells you the root cause of that particular problem. It just tells you you have inflammation in the colon or you have slow gastric emptying. It doesn't tell you the root cause. So don't get tricked into thinking that because you have GI symptom, or even if you have the lack of GI symptom, that you don't have a GI problem, right? Some people say, my tummy feels fine. I just have ex eczema. Well, guess what? That eczema could be caused by a GI problem. You don't have to have tummy pain to have GI problem, okay? And the reason is because the internal lining, here is your intestinal tract, okay? The internal lining of your intestinal tract have no pain nerve fibers. Let me repeat that. The internal lining of your GI tract have no pain nerve fibers. And it makes sense, right? Because food is constantly going through the intestinal tract. So if you were to feel the inside of your intestinal tract, you'll go nuts. You'll feel stuff all the time through all 30 feet of it. So you don't have any sensation inside your intestinal lining. You do have stretch receptors in, in the inside of your intestinal, but not pain receptor. So you would feel stretch. And on the outside of the intestinal lining, on the outside, you would have pain nerve receptor. But food is not going through the outside of the intestinal lining, going through the inside. So what I'm telling you is that just because you feel no GI symptoms doesn't mean you don't have a GI problem, okay, number one. And secondly, just because you have GI symptoms it doesn't tell you where the GI problem is. For example, gas and bloating. Like how many of you here have gas and bloating? 
I'm going to bet many of you experience gas and bloating. And uh, so gas and bloating is a symptom that can overlap with multiple different conditions. I'm going to show you today how to properly understand digestion with a systematic approach. And this is what I teach in our digital program. This is what I do when I talk to clients one on one so that I can help them understand where the problem is coming from. Because if you don't know where the problem is coming from, right, just treating gas and bloating, you're going to end up nowhere. And that's what most people do. And that's what most doctors do. They just give everybody the same pill. Oh, it's all because stomach acid problem. Here's a stomach acid medication. Everybody taking the same thing. That's not helpful. Okay. So, and uh, so, th so that's why we, we, you know, we, we make a big deal out of giving you accurate information. So I applaud you for being here. That's why you're my crowd. You know, I love people who love to learn. So stay with me through the conclusion of this talk. I'm going to give you some really helpful stuff. I'm going to give you some free resources at the end of this talk that will just really help you be able to implement right away and also stuff that's coming down the pipe that you'll have access to for free. So stay to the uh, end of this talk, okay? So let's talk about digestion. So when it comes to digestion, first you have to understand how normal digestion works, okay? So normal digestion goes from north to south, okay? Digestion. Okay, what does that mean? That means digestion starts from the top and work its way down. A lot of people are starting like, oh, it must be my this over here. So they do take probiotics and do stuff, and then maybe the problem is not with the probiotics. Because if the stuff on top is not working, nothing on the bottom is going to work. So you have to take a sequence approach. Just like I talked about on the first day, there's a roadmap that you must navigate. Okay, so with digestion, there's a roadmap too like a mini roadmap within a big roadmap, right? The brain immune gut connection, everything's connected. When the gut's not working, it's gonna to start to impact the immune system, it's gonna to start to impact brain. So we're just kind of doing just the gut part of it, like a little breakout of that particular area of your anatomy. So let's start with north, right? So if digestion goes from north to south, okay? If digestion goes from north to south, so how far north can you go? <laughs> Where does it start? Well, guess what? Digestion starts in your brain. So here's your brain. You're facing this way at your brain. So here will be your nose, mouth, your eye. Here's your mouth, okay? So digestion actually starts in the brain with the five senses. So from the time you see the food, you smell the food, you hear your mom say, dinner's ready. Like that is all stimulation to your brain to say, oh, food is ready, let's go eat. Right? And that starts to prime the digestive system. You start to actually salivate, right? Just think of something that you really like to eat or think of something sour. You can just think of something sour and you salivate. That proves that there's a brain-gut connection, and there is, okay? But digestion starts in the brain. In, in fact, with the five senses, to stimulate your brain to start priming that pump for digestion. So if you have decreased brain function, your digestion may not be working properly. That's that brain immune gut connection, the big idea that I talked about on the first day. So there's a nerve that goes from the brain stem. So here's your brain stem, spinal cord. And from the medulla, there's a nerve that come out and that's called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is a nerve that goes from the brain that gets its input from the brain. So the brain actually stimulate the vagus nerve and then the vagus nerve will innervate your gut. Okay, so the vagus nerve innervate the gut so that if the vagus nerve function is not working 100%, you may have decreased gut function because vagus nerve control things like gastric motility so you can move food along through. So if you don't have gastric motility or slow motility, you may have constipation and food doesn't get digested properly. Vagus nerve also stimulate the secretion of enzymes and stomach acid. So if you have decreased vagus nerve function, Forget about it. You're not going to produce enough acid and enzyme to help you digest food. Vagus nerve also innervate the gallbladder to contract so you can release bile into your digestive tract to help with fat emulsification. So your fat digestion may be compromised. So digestion starts in the brain, going from the brain through the vagus nerve, innervating the gut. Okay, so that's how far up it goes. Now, the next part here is your stomach. So the first part, the vagus nerve going to hit is your stomach. 
Hopefully I have enough room here. Guess what? I just slide this over. All right, so here's your stomach. Okay. So once food hits the stomach, there's various, there are very different, various different cells in your stomach that produces gastric HCL, hydrochloric acid. This is the acid, okay? This is HCL, acid. This is probably the most important thing in your digestive system, like next to the brain, right? It starts from north to south. This has to trigger a nerve signal to get your stomach to make stomach acid. Stomach acid is important for several different reasons. Number one, it's a sterilant. The acid neutralizes toxins and bacteria, not toxins, but microbes. So anytime you put things in your mouth, guess what? You're putting germs in your mouth. Why do we all get sick? Because in fact, part of that immune system is also in your mouth, right? You have tonsils and adenoids. The stuff in your mouth also help you to get rid of some germs, but the biggest part is the acid in the stomach. That gets rid of bacteria and things that you put into your mouth. So if you don't have enough stomach acid, guess what? You can't disinfect the things that you put into your mouth. So that makes it more likely you're going to get infections like gut infections and candida, and parasites and protozoas and amoebas. So that's a major issue, okay? And then so people are getting SIBO, right? Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's a big, talk, big topic right now. People are worrying about SIBO. Oh, SIBO, I need to take antibiotic. Got to take antimicrobial herbs to get rid of the bacteria. If you don't have stomach acid, the SIBO will keep returning. In fact, low stomach acid production is a risk factor for SIBO. And in fact, taking stomach acid stopping medication is a risk factor for SIBO as well because it's shutting down the stomach acid. You need the stomach acid to get rid of the germs. That's where the first place it happens. So when we say your gut, 70% of your gut is the 70% of your immune system is in your gut, this is part of it. It's not just a leaky gut and the gut bacteria, it's your stomach acid is part of that. If you want to boost your immune system, make sure your stomach acid is in the proper amount. And we talk about this, I mean, it takes a lot of teaching and, and, and you know, assessments. We do that in our, inside our digital program or if we work with, together one-on-one, -on -one. but this is so important, okay? So that's the first step. Now, what the second thing that stomach acid does is help you to break down protein and absorb minerals. So if you don't have enough stomach acid, the absorption of protein is compromised. You know, like chefs, culinary chefs, they all know this trick, right? If you want to tenderize a piece of steak, what do you do? You put some vinegar on it or apple cider vinegar on it, right? You use some acid to help tenderize the meat because that's what acid does. It breaks down protein. So if you don't have enough stomach acid, you're not gonna digest protein very well. So that might show up as like, man, I just, I need to go vegetarian because I just don't digest meat well. Well, it's not the meat's fault. It's you <laughs> don't have enough stomach acid due to brain, vagus nerve. There's many different reasons why you have low stomach acid production. You need to identify the root cause. So it's not always the brain, not always the vagus nerve, although it's pretty common, but there are other reasons for why you have low stomach acid production. The point is if you don't have enough stomach acid, you're not digesting your protein very well. So food sits there, and guess what happens when the food sits there and doesn't digest? It rots. The rotting food turns acidic, and that's the heartburn and the reflux you're feeling from the rotting food that's not breaking down. So you mistakenly think that you have too much acid when in fact you don't have enough. That's the problem. So you go take an acid-stopping medication, and guess what you're doing? You're making this problem worse. You might temporarily feel better. It's a Band-Aid, nice little Band-Aid, but you're creating a long-term issue and you're getting no healthier, okay? So that also helps you break down protein. And third thing it does, stomach acid help you absorb minerals. So for example, calcium and iron are minerals that require a very acidic environment to be absorbed. So here are people taking calcium supplement to prevent osteoporosis, but yet you don't have enough stomach acid to even absorb that calcium. So it doesn't matter how much calcium you're taking in a supplement form, you can't absorb the calcium. See, it's not what you take, it's how much do you absorb. And stomach acid is an important constituent of that. So you need to identify the root cause of that stomach acid, be it brain, vagus nerve, H. pylori infection, thyroid problem, sympathetic dominance, like whatever it is, and we teach that, or we assess that with you, okay? So stomach acid. Another thing that stomach acid does is that it triggers the release of enzymes from the pancreas and bile from the gallbladder. <laughs> so north to south, things on top stimulate the things on the bottom. It's like a chain reaction. That's how digestion works. 
So you want to skip and just take probiotic and think it's going to solve all your problem? How many of you are taking probiotic and still have issues? That could be the reason, right? I'm not saying that's, that is the reason. I don't know you, right? We have to meet. You have a chance to meet with me for a case review, and that's part of this weekend. You have a discounted rate to meet with me for 30 minutes, and it's $147. My normal rate is $495. So it's an awesome deal. Take me up on it, okay? I would love to meet with you and, and talk you through it and give you some tips and pointers, okay? But you have to understand that everything goes from north to south in digestion. So now let's come to the next spot in digestion. Now that we have stomach acid, this food is going to be passed down through the digestive tract to the next part, right? That's your small intestine. So here's your small intestine. Here's the SI. And over here we have pancreas. And then here we have the liver. And then we have gallbladder, right? Right here. And the gallbladder has a common bile duct where it sends the bile into this transition period area here. And the pancreatic enzymes also secrete their stuff into here, right? And then the liver obviously produces the bile and the bile is stored in the gallbladder. And see, like I'm showing you, I'm teaching you this stuff, right? You're already learning. Maybe you didn't know this, maybe you do. The point is stomach acid triggers the gallbladder to contract to secrete bile into your duodenum, into your small intestine. And, and the acid stimulates the pancreas to release enzyme into your small intestine so that you can actually digest food, break down food. So that's the next step. So if you don't have enough pancreatic release, enzyme release, guess what? Then you can't break down protein, fats, and carbohydrate. So people with pancreatic insufficiency will, will have trouble digesting fat, right? You see fat in the stool or you see like floating stool and, and, and then you, you, you eat fatty food, you don't feel good. Or you may have trouble digesting like fibers and carbs. So you feel bloated every time you eat fiber and carbs and you think it's SIBO, but it's not. You just have pancreatic insufficiency, <laughs> okay? Or, uh, and then you may have bile issues so that you can't secrete the bile and bile is really important in fat absorption. So then you can't break down fat nutrient like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K, and essential fatty acids like fish oil. So you get dry skin, your skin looks terrible because you can't absorb fat, and your vitamin A, D, E, K is compromised. So then your immune system is not working. You get leaky gut more easily because that's what those vitamins do, right? So you get these problems that's downstream, but the problem started upstream, perhaps in this area. Another thing that gallbladder does is really important in detoxification. In fact, the color of your stool is formed primarily by the bile and the breakdown of bilirubin, which is your red blood cell breaks down. So, but bile colors your stool. So if you're, if you're like bile is not working, you can't poop well. And bile also is really important in detox. It helps you to bind to various toxins, especially hormones, okay? So hormones, your body makes it, but you also have to detox it, okay? So that detoxification of that hormone is mainly responsible by the bile. So if your bile is not being released properly, then you cannot detox hormone well. If you can't detox hormone well, then these hormones can recirculate back into your system and start to wreak havoc, start to cause hormone imbalance. You get like heavy menstrual bleeds, you get like an endometriosis, uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, you get irregular cycle, you get all crazy PMSy. Like that is, can be related to problem with liver or gallbladder because they're hugely impacting hormone elimination. If you can't eliminate the hormone, you got a problem. It's gonna back up and it's gonna create symptoms for you. Now gallbladder from research, we also know that the bile also significantly contributes to your gut microbiome health. In fact, I'm gonna tell you the stomach acid does, the fact that you have enzyme, also really important, and then the bile, they all contribute to your microbiome health, which is like all the bacteria in your colon. That stuff don't grow right <laughs> unless you have proper acid and bile and all this other stuff, as well as vagus nerve function. So here you are trying to, hey, I eat fermented food and kimchi and sauerkraut and I take probiotics, but I'm still having a problem. Maybe you're skipping a few steps, north to south. Right, And then there's other things besides just the digestive tract that impact the microbiome, besides just the digestive tract, like hormones can impact it, inflammation can impact it, environmental toxin can impact it. 
So what I'm saying is there's a lot of myth being passed around because it sounds, I mean, it, it is true, but it's true to a certain context, right? It's true in that it's true that the gut microbiomes are really important and some people can benefit from probiotic and there's some research that's showing probiotic help, but it helped with a certain situation, but that doesn't mean that's your situation, right? And if you don't handle things from a north to south manner, even if you take a probiotic that's supposed to be good for you, you're still not going to benefit from it. That's the key. Okay. Now, if your gallbladder has been removed, then you have a disability. Because you have an organ that's supposed to be there. God put the organ there for a reason. If God said that was optional, he wouldn't have put it there. Gallbladder is necessary so that the vagus nerve, remember, is nerve control. Let's use red. This nerve has innervation to the gallbladder so that it tells it to contract. Gallbladder has muscle and has a sphincter, so it contracts. So when the nerve sends a signal saying, hey, we have a lot of fatty food coming in, the gallbladder says, sure, and squeeze all the bile into your intestinal tract to digest all the fat that you just ate. So you don't feel something and you can actually digest it properly. Now that you have gallbladder that's been removed, when you eat a fatty meal, you don't have enough bile because you have nothing there to squeeze more, right? It's kind of like a faucet. Sometimes you want a lot of water so you can wash your hand or wash your hair. Sometimes, not my hair, your hair. I don't need a lot of water for my hair, okay? But sometimes you need more water and sometimes you don't need that much water. You wanna be able to turn the faucet up or down, depends on how much water you need. Imagine you wanna wash your hair and it's really dirty and greasy and full of like stuff. And then you turn on the faucet and this drips come out. Like it's not very satisfying to wash your hair and you can't wash it out. It doesn't do the job because there's not enough water to rinse out all the gunk on your hair, right? That's what happens when you have the gallbladder removed. Like you don't have a faucet to turn it up. It's just a constant drip now because you don't have the gallbladder. So next time you eat something fatty, it's like, it's just not satisfying. You don't have enough bile to help you absorb all the stuff. That's why you have an absorption problem and you have a disability. And what do I mean by a disability? Well, if I, if you, you amputate your right arm, you can still live, just not very good, right? I prefer to have my right arm. I mean, I can still survive without it, but I, I function better if I have my right arm. <laughs> Same thing, you can take out your gallbladder and still live, you prefer to have your gallbladder though, right? Same thing with your kidney. Could you take out one kidney and still survive? Yeah, it's better if you have two though, right? So now you have a disability and they don't tell you that when they take it out, right? Now there's a medical reason to take it out for some people, like you can get infected and converse and you can get major issues. But like, there's a lot of gallbladder surgery that's being done that maybe people don't need. And more importantly, people are not taught why the gallbladder problem even happened in the first place. And I'll tell you what, what happens. Vagus nerve issue, this stomach acid problem, right? North to south. So like, if you want to look at gallbladder, you just look at everything up north to see if there's a problem there. And another thing is toxicity. If you're really toxic, you have like other hormonal challenges, really toxicity is the main thing. If you're toxic, your gallbladder is going to get sludgy, right? So that's why detox becomes really important. And then there's a the science and art to detox. Everybody's like, oh, I'm doing a detox. I'm, I, I take this one bottle from Sprouts that I bought. It says detox on the bottle, so it's detoxing me, right? No, <laughs> not necessarily. It depends on what toxin we're talking about, where the toxins are stored. I mean, there's a lot to it. So people are just Dr. Google, oh, I, you know, this supplement is good for gallbladder. It's good for me, right? It may be, but does that mean it's detoxing you? Like, depends. You know, it depends, guys. I'm giving you like high level information because most people just want to sell you something. They just want to say, you know, hey, I have the product. This product is good for that. Take it, right? It's good for you. Like they don't explain to you why. I'm explaining to you why. So then you don't just buy something without understanding how it's going to benefit you. That's why people spend so much money taking like 20, 30, 50 supplements and get nowhere because you're just buying into the hype. And you don't understand the basic physiology. I'm giving it to you. I mean, how valuable is it to have this knowledge so that for the rest of your life, like you, you invest one time and you get this, and then for the rest of your life, you can use this information, right? So you get more targeted. You get better results. That's the key. So, you know, a lot of times it's not about product. It's more about the knowledge, right?
So bile.pancreas. Uh, we're running out of room, so I'm going to move this over here. And we're going to start to shift over this side, okay? Because But we're going down anyhow. We're going to this side, but we're really going down, okay? So because we, we're running out of room here. But after pancreas and gallbladder, then we have the small intestine. Okay? Now, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the small intestine, right? Like we have absorption that happens. Primarily, the small intestine is to absorb the nutrient. The stomach is to break it down. The small intestine is to actually absorb it into your bloodstream, right? Now, in your small intestine, you also have, uh, you know, your, your barrier. Okay, that barrier serves immune function, right? So that's where leaky gut comes in. So if you have leaky gut, this is going to lead to a double whammy of malabsorption and inflammation. Okay, so then the leaky gut can lead to autoimmune disease, which I talked about yesterday at a big talk, right? When I spoke yesterday at the, the main talk, we talked about immunity and autoimmunity, and I touched on leaky gut. But know that this autoimmune is have a correlation with leaky gut. Doesn't mean every single person with autoimmune have leaky gut. It's just a very common occurrence, okay? So that's where the small intestine come in. Now, obviously, in the small intestine, you can have SIBO, right? Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But remember, the reason you have bacterial overgrowth, you need to ask why, right? Now, some people do just catch a bug, food poisoning, gastroenteritis, traveler's diarrhea. You caught a bug and you got SIBO, right? But for a lot of people, this stuff shows up because you have deficiency in the upper parts of digestive tract. That's why you have SIBO, like vagus nerve dysfunction, gastric immotility, things are not moving through. So food just sits there in your intestine and they rot and they ferment. So not only can you get SIBO, you can also get SIFO, that small intestinal fungal overgrowth. You can say candida overgrowth. Okay. So these gut infections are usually associated with problem in the upper part of the digestive tract. Okay. And then, um, so that's the, the small intestine. See if we have room here. And then we're going to get into the large intestine. Now, in the large intestine, this is where elimination happens, right? The goal of the large intestine is to absorb water out of your, you know, the, the fecal matter so you can have a formed stool. And then the goal is eventually get rid of all these toxic junk that your body just don't need anymore. But more importantly, remember, your large intestine contains a lot of your microbiome. That's the bacteria in your gut, right? So in a small intestine, it should be relatively sterile. You should not have much bacteria in the small intestine. And that's why when you have, do have bacteria, that bacteria will start to meet with food that's not completely digested yet. Because remember, north to south, food gradually become more and more digested the lower it goes. So if you have small intestine, or if you have bacteria in the upper part of your intestinal tract where food's not completely broken down yet, that's where fermentation happens. That's your SIBO and your SIFO. So in a large intestine, that's where all the beneficial bacteria is, right? Now, remember, you don't just have beneficial bacteria. You have beneficial yeast. You have candida that's vulnerably present. You have even some amoebas and some protozoa. You may even have some parasite that's living with you that you don't know. They don't usually cause problem unless you become a problem, meaning your immune system becomes compromised. We talked about yesterday in the immunity and autoimmunity session, where when you have chronic inflammation, it suppresses your immune system, and then now you start to get this chronic infection pattern. And that's what happens. That's why people get these gut infections, not because you catch them. Certainly, that's a scenario that can happen. But more commonly, I see people show up, and now, yeah, I got like SIBO, I got parasite, I got a virus, I got like every infection in the sun. You didn't catch those things. You just lost the defense against those things. So those things are overgrowing like weeds. So the goal is to strengthen the immune system. So then those things can go away on its own without having to kill every single one of them. That's not the goal, but that's what most people think. So what you're thinking is a Western allopathic symptom treating model. I have a parasite. I'm going to take something to kill a parasite. What supplement do I take? Well, what's the difference between like what drug do I take for that? You're thinking the same thing, a pill for every ill. You're not thinking the root cause and how things are connected. I have SIBO, so I got to take antimicrobial herbs, you know, garlic and berberine, but Okay, what's causing the SIBO, right? You don't want to just like, okay, I have candida too, so I got to take caprylic acid and candidax. And, so you're just trying to take a pill to get rid of something instead of trying to learn 
how it all comes about and how to balance the body. Because the truth is, I mean, you all know this, right? The body is amazing. The body is complex. It's amazing how this orchestra, how we even survive on, in this toxic environment, how our bodies can compensate all to keep you alive so you can live to fight another day and find a solution. But know that this is so, so because it's complex, you can't, there's not a, there's not a easy answer, right? There's the, com, the, the, con, uh, the concepts can be simplified, like what I'm doing for you, but it may not be a, a miracle pill or overnight or take one pill, solve all your problem type of deal, right? For some people, maybe they lucky, they find that one thing. Awesome, good for them. But that's not every single person. So you need to go find what the solutions are and there may be multiple parts. Because could you have a vagus nerve problem and a stomach acid problem and a liver gallbladder problem and a pancreas problem and a leaky gut and large intestine issue? Yeah, all day long I see people with multiple digestive issues. And usually there's other things that's causing problems to this. Remember, we're talking about digestion. You have the brain, you have the immune system all impacting this, right? So we have to look at the whole picture. So speaking of large intestine, the gut microbiome is really important for brain health. Microbiome now has been shown to very important, be very important for autoimmune disease because microbiome contribute to immune tolerance. So your immune system can tolerate food that you eat. So you don't have so much food sensitivity. It also controls tolerance to your own tissue. So you don't develop autoimmunity. So microbiome is really, really important. Okay. But, but remember, you know, what's a cell? So you don't want to know what type of constant microbiome support. So I'm just going to take probiotic. That's going to solve my problem, right? North to south. And think about the brain and your gut. This is just a gut. We have to think about the brain and the immune system and how all the various triggers play into it. Um, so there's, now, remember, within this digestive system, more, more, I'm showing you how it normally works, right? Normal physiology. But just remember, you can always have autoimmune that can throw things off. You can always have autoimmune that can throw things off because when you have autoimmune disease, then your immune system can start to attack your small intestine. That's your celiac disease. It can start to attack your large intestine. That's your ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease or lymphocytic colitis. You can have autoimmune attacking your stomach. That's your pernicious anemia or autoimmune gastritis. You can have autoimmune attacking your pancreas. That's your type one diabetes, by the way. You can have autoimmune attacking the liver, autoimmune hepatitis. I mean, you can have immune, your autoimmune attacking the vagus nerve. So then you get autonomy, dysautonomia and POTS. Okay, so the autoimmune can throw everything off. And that's why it's the big idea. It's brain immune gut connection because they're all connected. Okay, so uh, hopefully this helps you to understand the key uh, between different things. Now, you know, as far as solution to it, I mean, it's like, so Dr. Khan, what do I take for it? That's about the worst question you can ask me. Like, if you want to be asking me a question, the, don't ask me, what do I take for it? Because I don't know what to take for it. And anybody tell you that, oh yeah, just take that, you'll be fine. They're not. They either don't know what they're doing or they're just selling you something, okay? The question is, how can I learn this? How can I figure out what the root cause is? That should be the real question, okay? So if you ask me what to take, I mean, I don't know. It depends on what the problem is. I just showed you north to south, right? This stomach, this gallbladder, this pancreas, this small intestine, this large intestine, this autoimmune problems, there's potentially SIBO or CIFO, there's microbiome issues. Like, you need to identify the root cause. Now, it seems complicated, but it's not because you already know more than you did before you showed up here. You already have more clarity. Okay, digestion, what's the stuff? You have a, like a direction now. Before you're just like, oh, reaching for everything. Now you're like, okay, let's figure it out. What's the stuff, right? That's the benefit of having a roadmap. That's the benefit of having guidance and coaching. Okay, so uh, I want to just um, bring up another one more time the roadmap that we discussed on Monday because many. Uh, I know many of you are not able to make that. So I want to just review that concept because it's so huge. And by the way, I have produced a brain and you gut masterclass where I actually teach all of this with 13 expert interviews as well as mastery session where I teach every day. I'm going to release that in about a month. 
And uh, and this, you'll be able to watch the whole brand new gut masterclass where I take you through this roadmap that I'm going to review with you. You'll be able to watch it for free for a week. Okay, so I'm going to get that information to you so you can watch it. All you have to do is just uh, basically opt in. Okay, so you just got to get on my email list. And what I'm going to do is I actually I'm going to put in the chat right now. And uh, this is the uh, the information that I shared with you yesterday. But I don't see that many of you taking advantage of it, which is crazy to me. Like I'm giving you something that's worth a lot of money. So please take advantage of it. So if you can see in the chat, in the questions, I put in the link. That's askdrcom.com slash gut repair. Okay, this is a free opt-in. Basically, you're uh, putting your email and your name to add, to get this uh, download of our Neurometabolic Integration Gut Repair Program. And this gut repair program is something we use clinically with my clients that I work with one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm just giving it to you, okay? It's an eating plan that teaches you what to eliminate, what to incorporate, what supplement to take, how to stabilize your blood sugar. It's awesome. So as far as digestion that we're talking about, right, th this gut repair program will help you with several aspects of it. It's not going to, like, solve all your problems necessarily, but it may Right, because you have an uncomplicated case. If you follow what we describe and take the supplement we describe, it may just solve your problem. It's a first step to build a foundation. So go to askdrcon slash gut repair to download this free eating plan. Like it's my gift to you. Okay, no cost. Just want to build that relationship with you, and you can also get into our ecosystem. So once you opt into that, what we'll do is we'll notify you when we're launching the brand new gut masterclass again, which is in about a month, uh, probably beginning of November. But you have to be in our email list to be able to get notice that we're releasing this masterclass, which is a seven day long masterclass with multiple sessions just like this. But each day, there's several of them. I'm taking you through in depth each part of that roadmap. So what's the roadmap? Remember, we have like this, right? We have struggling and we have thriving. And we have the blocks, the building blocks, like this, to get you to thriving. The first building block is fuel delivery. And then we have to balance your immune function. And then we detox. And then there's neuro endo, which is your brain and your hormone. So you got to do it one step at a time. And many of you are skipping steps. And that's why you're not getting better. So within the fuel delivery, first step is perfusion. That means you got to make sure your circulation's working. You're not anemic. You can deliver oxygen to your tissue. Second step is blood sugar. If your blood sugar is compromised, whether it's high or low blood sugar, nothing's working. Next is digestion. That's the north to south that I just talked about. <laughs> digestion, breaking down and absorption of food, right? That's your foundation, fuel delivery, okay? And then once you do that, the next step is you work on leaky gut because leaky gut is an immune system problem, not a GI problem. It belongs in an immune category. And then we want to balance your immune system by dampening inflammation. And this is where I talked about the T-Helper 1, T-Helper 2. Yesterday, that talk yesterday was on that. Okay, like break, you know, break it down. And then lastly, we want to work on infection. And there's quite a few here. Right? Possibilities, virus, bacteria, candida, uh, and uh, parasites, okay? Once we are able to balance your immune system, then we work on detox. With detox, we have several different steps. Number one is drainage. Okay? Drainage means support your body's natural drainage capability, which is your fecal elimination, sweating, urination, right? Because if it's plugged up, like gallbladder, earlier we talked about digestion, Gallbladder is one of the, your detox organs, right? Bile is not only for fat absorption, also help you with bind to toxins and help you eliminate. So if your gallbladder is like sludgy, then you have a drainage problem, right? And then after we drain it, then we want to do detox. What's the difference between drainage and detox? Drainage is your body's natural way of getting rid of stuff on a daily basis. Detox is where we're actually helping you to bind to these chemicals, right? So then we can eventually eliminate. Now, the last step to this is bind. So what's the difference between detox and bind? Again, detox is a chemical process where you're using specific type of like glutathione or different type of uh, supplements to, to bind chemically to the toxin to make it 
you know, turn it into a fat soluble substance into a water soluble substance so you can actually eliminate it. And then the binding is where we're using various binders to help you bind to the toxin so you can actually eliminate it. So this is our and the step by step to, to detox. And lastly is neuroendo. So we want to address any brain issue. That includes neurotransmitter issue, leaky brain, brain inflammation. And then we want to address your thyroid. And then lastly, steroid hormones. Steroid hormones include your sex hormones and your adrenal hormones. So that's this is how you navigate this roadmap so you get to thriving. But a lot of people want to just take the hormone, skipping many steps. So even if you take the hormone, if your blood sugar sucks and you have perfusion problem, you can't digest food, the hormone is not going to help you. So this is so important. And that's why I produce a brand new gut masterclass, and you get to watch that for free in about a month. Okay, just again, be very clear. It's not we we already launched it once. We have to prepare to launch with our other partners. We're going to launch it again in probably the first week of November. You have to be on our email list to be invited to it. Okay, and I'm giving you a freebie right now to go and um, jump on the, the link, which I will put here again, or maybe Megan can help me put it in. Uh, it's apps.com, drcom.com slash gut repair. This is the link where you can go to to download the Neurometabolic Integration Gut Repair Program. It's a free eating plan that you can help yourself to start build the foundation of this fuel delivery and digestion. It's gonna take you through the first few steps of this roadmap, not all of it, but it's a foundation step and it's free for you. It's my gift to you for attending. And then once you download that eating, the, the gut repair program, then you're on our email list. And in about a month, we'll notify you when the brain and gut masterclass is launched, where I'll go over each of these steps in detail and you get to watch it for free for a whole week. How's that sound? Okay. So again, just trying to give you as much resource as possible. And then for this weekend, we have a couple of specials. If you want to consult with me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you can schedule a uh, introductory case review where you can meet with me uh, for 30 minutes, 25 minutes, and it's only 147. Now, typically, my regular rate is 250 for half an hour, 495 for a whole hour. So you're getting a 50% discount on that. I'm going to encourage you to take advantage of it. It's a way to meet with me. What I do at the case review is I look at your, you know, your previous history, and we have symptom assessment forms. Now, I'm not going to look at like all your lab tests from like the past 20 years. Like that's that's not the purpose of that. Okay, if you have the most recent labs, I can look at it. But more importantly, I'm going to look at your history. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to point out to you, okay, where on this roadmap are you deficient and where should you start? That alone will be well worth that time. So you can schedule a case review. And you can go to uh, our booth. There's a place there where you can click to order the case review. And that discount rate expires uh, today. Today's the last day. This is only for the Nourish Festival uh, attendees like yourself. So you get a special discount. So you can schedule a case review. Another way to uh, engage with us is, uh, again, through the gut repair program. So that's free. So you can just download that. And then in one month, you get to watch the full discussion of this brand new gut masterclass. And lastly, if you just want to dive into it, it's like, you know what? I need to learn this. And you, you do need to learn this. Uh, we have options for you to enroll in our digital program and coaching program. This is where you have six modules or 16 modules. So you can kind of do a beginner six module, which will cover the first six module of this. And then you get weekly coaching as well, where I show up every week to teach you how to use the information and tailor to yourself in a group setting. And my nutritionist also show up on a separate coaching call. So you get two coaching calls a week from me and the nutritionist to help you to implement this. Okay, so you can invest in a six module level or you can go for the full 16 module course, which includes the whole entire program, 16 weeks of coaching as well as the Brain Immune Gut Masterclass recording, which I will just give to you up front for free, okay? So uh, again, so you have a lot of options to engage with us. I just want to make myself available to you. I want to be a resource for you. So to that end, I'm going to deliver another talk. Uh, so uh, this talk is supposed to end on top of the hour uh, at, um, what is it, 2 p.m. Eastern. I will jump on at 2.30 Eastern to deliver my last talk of the Nourish Festival. It'll be about a half hour presentation and it'll be a, a surprise talk, but I'm gonna promise you it's gonna be good. So come to that one uh, in about 2.30 uh, Eastern to our booth. Uh, I'll be uh, doing live video chat just like this for about 30 minutes, delivering a special talk just for you guys.
to continue to deliver value. I mean, there's no reason why not all of you are there. I mean, you, we're getting like, you know, 30 people there. I mean, we need to get a lot more of you there because you need this information. I'm going to deliver for you. Okay, so I'll do one more talk uh, in about uh, 45 minutes from now. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to open up our live, uh, our private chat session to scheduled calls. So that will be scheduled 15 minute slots with my team. Okay. My team will talk you through and say, okay, what is your need? What is going on with you? What is the best way for you to go? Should you be scheduling a case review or do you, would you benefit from a digital program or would you benefit from just doing the gut repair program, the opt in? So they'll help you to kind of point you in the right direction. Okay. So you can schedule those private talks. Now, yesterday, I think nourish because we have so many people scheduling private talk with us that basically we broke the internet. <laughs> we broke the system <laughs> that a lot of people couldn't connect. It, just so you know, like we were sitting there waiting for you, those of you that scheduled, but it, it didn't show up, it didn't connect. We were sitting there waiting. So I think it just, this, you know, it's, this is new for nourish. They're doing the best they can. Uh, I think we also just had a lot of people taking us up on, up on it. So things were kind of broken. So, uh, you know, we'll reach out to you if you already scheduled we'll, and, you know, the Nourish Festival is going to let us know who scheduled, who could connect. We'll try to connect with you. For those of you who did not schedule, you'd like to speak to our team and find out what the digital program is about. What does it look like to work with us? You can schedule these 15 minute calls to talk to my team and they'll point you in the right direction. I'll show up in about 45 minutes from now to deliver another 30 minute talk on a bonus topic, a surprise topic. You don't want to miss that. And in the meantime, like I said, you can use the ask.com on able to schedule, uh, no slots available. Uh, I think it's because uh, they have to leave that empty just so that I can um, deliver that 30 minute talk. Because if they put slots available, then that 30 minutes will be taken out too, then I can't do my 30 minute talk. So if you guys just wanna skip the 30 minute talk that I'm gonna do and just talk to my team, that's cool too. Uh, but we, we, we will open up the private slots after that time, okay? Uh, you know what? And also, let me uh, let me do this. I'm going to put this link right here, guys. I know you guys are like, what if I can't get on this private talk? You know what? I'm going to do this one time. My team probably is like, what are you doing, Dr. Khan? Don't do it. Oh, that one's hub. Uh, make it. Are you there? I don't even know what the link is. Uh Please, yeah, please post the link for DC, for the DC, Rihanna. Post link to, I'm gonna get you guys a link that you can schedule directly with us for a 15 minute call with my team outside of Nourish because I think the Nourish system is not working very good. So let's do that. Uh, Tim, can you post link to DC and send it to me? I'm gonna tell them to post it right now. Let's see, are they doing it? I'm gonna write it on the board right here too. I just don't know what the link is because my staff, they take care of these things for me. Megan, if you can uh, send me the link but to text or put it in the chat, please, somehow, I will do it right now for you guys, okay? Please stay on. I'm gonna finish in about just one minute and I'm gonna put that link so you guys can schedule a free 15 minute discovery call with my team. This will be outside of Nourish because I think the system is just hanging up and it's not working. So for those of you who are interested in having a 15 minute discussion with our team about our programs and what's right for you, uh, please do that. Okay, Megan has put it on there. It's uh, go.onesub.com slash hope discovery call. Is that the right one for the uh, nourish? I thought we had a separate one. Okay. Let me just write it right here. Go.onesub.com slash Hope discovery call all no spaces. Hope discovery call one word no spaces. Okay, go dot com slash hope discovery call. So you can go use that link to schedule your own fifteen minute calls in case the nourish ones are not working. And again, yesterday a lot of people were dropped off, and the nourish festival. You know, Jen, the, the, the owner was emailing me saying, hey, people are trying to get a hold of you and they couldn't. We're like, we've been sitting here waiting for them. So I, I think the system, if it's not stable, use our link. Uh, yes, the 15 minute discovery call will be free for you, okay? Now the discovery call is not like, they're not gonna lead your lab. My assistant are not doctors. They're just there to point you in the right direction. 
They'll find out what your symptoms are. Like, okay, hmm, it's complicated. You probably should talk to Dr. Khan and have an appointment. Hmm, you probably benefit from a digital product. They'll point you in the right direction, okay? But, so don't say, hey, I'm going to bring like 15 different labs for you for them to read. Like, that's not what that is. If you want someone to interpret your lab, you need to schedule an appointment. So you can either schedule the case review with me, right, using the special link, because after this weekend, if you were to schedule a case review, it's $150. Like, that's, the, that's what people... That's the real price, okay? I'm not throwing that out there like, oh, I'm just raising the price. No, it's been like that for the past few years. It's $450 to schedule a case review if you want that uh, after this weekend. But if you want to get a discounted case review, you can do so by today. That's going to our booth. And maybe, uh, team, can you guys put the, uh, the link for the Expo case review up on the screen as well, okay? Please uh, put Expo, I'm telling my team to do that right now, Expo Case Review link on screen. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll put that link as well so you don't have to go to our booth and find it. Because some people, are, by the way, if you want to go to our booth to listen to the 30-minute talk in about 40 minutes from now, uh, go to sort ex uh, search exhibitor by category and you want to go to the medical provider category, that's where we'll be. And if you scroll through the medical provider category, uh, you'll find the ball headed Chinese guy and click on that or enter the booth, then that's how you find our booth. That, that'll have all of our digital program information, our, our, uh, the discounted case review information, you can click and order those things there. Uh, and uh, my team will also, let's see here, are they doing it? There we go. So it's the same link. The first letters are the same. The second part, if you want to schedule a case review, this is the link, Nourish Case Review. Very simple. All one word. All one word, Nourish Case Review. Like go.onesealth.com, Nourish Case Review. If you want to schedule the discounted uh, case review, because if you go and schedule the 15 minute call with our team using this link, it won't be till next week. And you would have missed the discounted case review, okay? Because we're booked up, okay? So for our own schedule, that's not gonna be till next week. And this discounted case review, it's only good till the end of today. So you wanna use this link to get your discounted case review. And you can still do a discovery call if you want to, but grab that deal if you want that deal, okay? Because after that, it'll be $450, and that's real world value, and that's that's what our regular fee, and it's worth more than that, okay? You're getting more value than that, uh, but you're getting a discounted rate for the uh, Nourish case review if you go there now, or you can schedule the Hope Discovery call for a free 15-minute call with my staff. They'll put you in the right direction, but that won't be till next week, and the regular fee will be $450 to talk to me for your first visit. Okay, so again, uh, no, you don't need to sign up to have an account with one hub. You just need to go to go.onesup.com slash this or that. It'll pop up a scheduling, a, a calendar. You can pick the time that you want. If you're scheduling a whole discovery call, then you're done after you pick your time. If you are picking the Nourish case review, then after you pick your time, they will prompt you to take payment. So use your credit card. Uh, it's 147 for the case review, which is discounted from 450. So that's only good till the end of today while the Nourish Festival is still happening. So go ahead and sign up at the Nourish case review or schedule a discovery call. I'll be here. Uh, I'll be at the my booth, uh, which you can search by exhibitor by category, medical providers. You can go there and uh, I'll do a 30 minute talk on a bonus and a special topic for you guys. In the meantime, I gave you a lot of. Um, information on the gut repair program, you can go to askdrcon.com slash gut repair. You need to get on our email list so that I can notify you when I have the big masterclass launch, which is a seven day masterclass with multiple interviews and sessions just like this while I'm teaching you. It's all for free for seven days. Okay, and after that, if you like it, then you can purchase a recording if you like, but that's an awesome deal for you guys. Okay, so I'm just giving you as much uh, you know, helpful information as I can uh, again, uh, if you like to talk to our staff, use the go.onesup.com slash hope discovery call. If you like to just schedule and get the deal, 
Go to hope uh, go.oneshub.com slash nourish case review to get the 147 deal before the day's over. After that, it'll be the regular 450. And uh, my staff will, you know, once you pay for that and schedule, my staff will be in touch with you to help you to get the paperwork and they'll tell you what you need. So don't worry about the, the you know, the, the admin stuff afterwards. Our team's really great at following up on that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see here. Okay, great. And, uh, my, you know, again, you can, uh, once I do my 30 minute talk, my staff will open up the 15 minute calls on on the nourish side, but there's no guarantee it'll connect because it didn't connect yesterday, but we'll do our best, okay? Uh, so please come to our booth in 30 minutes. I'll be speaking to you there soon. And uh, my staff, by the way, will be there in our booth right now. Our staff, our team will be at our booth in a live video chat if you have questions. So you can go and ask questions right now in a, kind of like a group setting. So they'll be manning that chat before I show up in 30 minutes. So you can always go there right now and talk to them as well. Okay, so awesome. And I think that's all the questions. Yeah, if you have questions, please go to our booth right now where my staff will be manning the live video chat in our booth. And then you can actually talk to them. They can answer your question without the 15 minute call. They can just talk to you right now live. So that might be a great way to answer some of your questions uh, without taking up the 15 minutes. Uh, certainly if you need 15 minutes to ask them like what's the digital program, what program is best for me, you can schedule something, you can use this link, but that appointment won't be scheduled for next week. They will not be giving you any clinical advice, dietary advice. They can only point you in the right direction, okay? They're not doctors. Uh, if you wanna schedule a case review with me, you can use this link right now. In fact, it's only good to the end of today. I highly encourage you to take advantage of that because after that, the, 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 our rate, I mean, the, the regular fee goes up by $300. So you're saving $300. So it's up to you, you know, uh, either way you need, you, if you need this, you need this. You know who you are that you need that you need this. If you want to save some money, go and take advantage of it. Uh, or you can talk to our staff, but they'll be there for the next 30 minutes answering your questions and I'll pop on in about uh, 30 minutes. Okay, talk to you guys soon, bye-bye. Uh, Candy, health insurance does not cover any of this. This is coaching, this is health coaching, nutrition coaching. This is not an insurance question. Insurance only covers drugs and surgery. And this, this is not about drugs and surgery. It's about your well-being, which is your control. This is all about like the digital program. It's like, it's a course, like insurance don't cover that, right? So just the, the, the mindset of insurance covering stuff is what's causing Americans to have health problems. And uh, I have much more to say about that. So let's end it on that note, but let's have you, uh, we'll see you guys in about 30 minutes. Okay, take care.